Again, I should warn you, if you have children in the room, this next segment may not be good for them to see. John Stalliano is a pornographer. This is his second appearance on my show, uh, last time I had him on, because he faced then 30 years in prison for selling porn. And that was just two months ago, but since then, you won. Congratulations. Well, thank you, John. The judge ruled that the evidence, uh, after the prosecution rested, he ruled that the evidence that they presented was inadequate for any jury to to convict me beyond a reasonable doubt of any of the charges. So you didn't even have the full trial? No, it, it, it technically was cut off, but my lawyers did such a good job of uh, confronting the evidence that they presented, and also the Justice Department did a, a relatively bad job. You think their heart wasn't in it, that the, even the lawyers didn't really... Uh, I think it was obvious from what was going on in the courtroom and also what was going on in, in the audience where there were uh, interns with the Justice Department which seemed to be, from what I could tell from my friends, more on my side than their side because the fundamental uh, principle of America, the defining principle of America is people think this is a free country and, and people don't go into, get into the Justice Department to prosecute adults for distributing to adults something they freely want to consume. And yet they do lock some pornographers up for this. We'll get to that in a second, but let's just talk about your case a moment. There's so much porn out there and tons on the internet. They picked on you because you're big and because two of your movies were a little kinky. Well, they were uh, fetish oriented and a fetish that the Justice Department thought they could get a conviction on. There's lots of fetish oriented movies. There's there was no violence in this. No, there were no violence in it. The Justice Department prosecuted you for obscenity. And exactly what that is, is not easy to figure out. 30 years ago, the Supreme Court came up with something it called the Miller Test. Something as obscene if community standards find, this, find, find it appeals to prurient interest, whatever that is, if it's patently offensive, and if it lacks serious literary, artistic, political, or scientific value. Based on that, I would say most of what you sell should get you locked up. I don't think the jury would have convinced, convicted me by the Miller test. Why? Because people believe that adults looking at what adults created, they don't believe that those are accurate standards and that they're very, very difficult to interpret and that they can see that this is a BS. This well, law. Then, then times have changed. Maybe the the war on sex is over. War on sex is actually the title of a book written by sex therapist Dr. Marty Klein, and he joins us now from California. So, Hello, John. Hey, Marty. Hello, Marty. It sounds like you guys have won. The war is over. Prosecutor's heart wasn't in it. Judge said he had no case. Uh, of course, every reasonable person is glad that John uh, is walking free um, just for uh, selling uh, adult products to adults. But, you know, the, the bureaucracy in Washington, D.C., and in, in state capitals across the country, the bureaucracy that pursues these, uh, these court cases is still in place. What a lot of people may not uh, appreciate is that the machinery that was established under the Bush administration to, to pursue and to punish private sexual behavior is still there, and it's still being used to persecute uh, various uh, individuals. And some people are in jail. Let's talk about a couple recent cases. Max Hardcore, whose real name is Paul Still Little. in jail. Still in jail. For what? It's, it's movies of legal behavior um, that adults purchase um, in the pri and, and look at in the privacy of their own homes. For so that, he got a 46-month sentence. Yeah, four years in jail is a long time. And so people are being put in jail for creating movies depicting legal behavior that adults are buying to look at in their own homes. Some people find that troubling. Why can't one state, one community, set its own standard? Well, communities can set standards for behavior out in the street. You know, communities can set standards for driving too fast. Communities can set standards for uh, zoning and, so why not and things this? like that. Well, because this is private behavior in, in private homes. I mean, uh, should we say that a community should have the right to ban your program because people don't like your face? You know, I would argue, whether it's your show or Bill O'Reilly's show or anybody else, that uh, we don't want individual communities to decide 
uh, what kinds of programs people can see in the privacy of their own homes. Thank you, Marty Klein. Thank you, John Stoliano. I'm glad you're here in the studio with me instead of in jail.